Yerevan and Baku have pledged not to use force against each other and maintain previous agreements after the leaders attended talks hosted by Moscow in the Black Sea port of Sochi. In September, at least 286 people died in fighting along the Armenia-Azerbaijani border, making it the worst escalation of fighting since 2020. The peace treaty is not here yet, and it's too early to talk about its basic elements because it's still a subject of compromises, which should be reached on both sides with the mediation of other countries, including Russia, if both contracting parties want. In 2020, more than 6,700 people died in a six-week war which resulted in Azerbaijan claiming broad swaths of Nagorno-Karabakh and adjacent territories. Around 90,000 people fled the fighting into Armenia, the vast majority of whom were women or children. The latest major flare-up in fighting resulted in artillery and drone strikes deep within Armenian territory, and it ended with a U.S. brokered ceasefire. Iranian authorities have announced that they will hold public trials for 1,000 people arrested during protests in Tehran, which started after the death of 22-year-old Masha Amini, who died while in police custody. The trials will be held in public later this week, according to the country's Tasneem news agency. Amnesty has described Tehran's response to waves of protest in the country as a brutal crackdown. Over the weekend, Iranian security forces have fired gas and gunshots into crowds of demonstrating students. At least 283 people have died. More than 14,000 have been arrested since protests began seven weeks ago. Some of the people arrested in other provinces have been accused of offenses that carry the death penalty. If I may quote a friend of mine, she said before the revolution, we felt that all doors are open. After the revolution, it all changed. Many women in Iran are saying that they have had enough, frustrated by an erosion of their rights after the 1979 revolution and following the death of Mursa Amini in the custody of the morality police, that frustration has boiled over and into anger. Massa was 22 and arrested for allegedly not complying with government standards on wearing the hijab. She never left custody alive and since then women have been burning their headscarves and cutting their hair in protest. And their rallying cry in the streets and online, women, life, freedom. Women, they have been participating in uh, almost all the protests in, uh, during the Islamic Republic, but now... Uh, the role has been changed. Now they are uh, playing the role of leadership. It is inspiring that after decades of a struggle against these compulsory veiling laws, their cries for um, uh, being able to choose what to wear is finally being heard at the international level. Supported by many men and boys, women are calling for bodily autonomy and fundamental freedoms. And after decades of economic decline, protesters in cities and rural areas are also demanding regime change, with Gen Z conscious of the fact that elsewhere, life looks different. This is a younger generation who is very well connected to the outside world and knows how other young people live especially in the West. So they would like to follow that example. This is the revolution of the young people led by women. The fear barrier is broken. So look just at the pictures. Very young girls, they, they burn their headscarf, um, they cutting off their hair. And look at the students at high school, at the school, how they are reacting to the officials. That's really different from, from all uh, the protests in the past. They compare themselves with, uh, uh, with, with others, asking themselves why uh, I have not this kind of freedom in my country.
they are uh, ready, I think, uh, to, 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 to pay the price. But their bravery has been met with a brutal crackdown by authorities. And according to data from the Center for Human Rights in Iran, as of the 31st of October, at least 283 people have been killed and over 14,000 arrested with reports that no age group is being spared. It is also very worrisome that they are taking young, you know, elementary and high school students and taking them in these reformation setups and teaching them how to behave and how to indoctrinating them just because their children in elementary and middle school are also uh, protesting. And with social media playing a key role in mobilising young people, authorities are also taking their crackdown online with widespread internet blackouts. We got some problems with the internet, the internet blackout, filtering of the social platforms imposed by the Iranian authorities. I can confirm that uh, for us as a journalist uh, to, to receiving and verifying the trusted information is a very, very difficult duty right now. Uh, and we are struggling. And that means it is hard to say whether these protests will be able to achieve their ultimate aims. From what can be verified, many believe that this uprising could pose one of the most serious challenges to the Islamic Republic since it came to be just over four decades ago. And that has prompted a response from Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who has once again accused external powers of stoking the unrest. To call them agents of Israel and America was a very tired rationale that Iran's supreme leader has used to justify his brutal rule. So many people thought it's really the last words of a dictator who refuses to acknowledge reality. And what about the response from the West? The EU has sanctioned Iran's morality police, saying that it was responsible for the death of Masa Amini, as well as the Iranian law enforcement forces over the subsequent crackdown on protesters and a key official who coordinated the internet shutdown. Iran promptly responded with the announcement of levies against 20 EU-based institutions and individuals. Levies the bloc has dismissed as politically motivated and Iranians are calling for the international pressure to be maintained, a call that the United Nations seems to be heeding. In the absence of any domestic channels of accountability, continuing absence of uh, domestic channels of accountability, I would say and I would stress once again that the international community has a responsibility. I therefore have called for the prompt establishment of an independent investigative mechanism in all human rights violations leading up to and since the death of Gina Masamini. But is that enough? The tech community, um, businesses in, in, in IT can certainly help when it comes to um, uh, assuaging, the, so to say, the, the, the internet shutdown um, and the, the cut in mobile communications that is taking place in Iran. Um, but also governments uh, should uh, not only go through the, the processes of, uh, you know, UN resolutions, uh, having uh, like a, a resolution uh, that uh, mandates a kind of investigation into what is actually going on, um, which would Iran would put Iran on, under pressure, but it can also help directly people uh, who are there uh, on the ground, maybe who have to flee. Uh, they should uh, be receiving asylum, political uh, asylum uh, in countries that want to support this. For those still in the country, though, the message is clear. Whether this uprising succeeds or fails, the regime will likely face more challenges like this one. Each generation, generation has their own um, request, their desire. So if um, this, the authorities want to keep alive their system, they need to listen to their people. This is the first uh, basic uh, rules. They had more than four decades to, to improve the situation, especially for the women's rights uh, and the young generation. You know, uh, Iran is a very, very young uh, country. More than 60% of this population are less than 30. But look at the protests. According to the official figures, more than 40% of the people who have been arrested are less than 20. If uh, the Iranian official wants to um, do something, it's, to, it's today. Tomorrow is too late.